Now that I have the color grading, now it's time to get to the cinematic. So now at this point, if I was in pre-production, I've got my concept art, I could snap photos of this. That, I mean, that's pretty good there. That's concept art, that's color, lighting, all these things. Now I wanna start working with my cinematics. And as part of the cinematics, when I say cinematics, I'm talking about the things that move, the things that give me the emotion and stuff like that. If I hit play, I'm gonna hit play right here. And I am just gonna sort of fly around a little bit. I can see water droplets because it's raining, right? And I even see little water streaks on my, my uh, camera lens here, which is just a neat little particle effect there. But I don't see any rain, right? So I see the, everything is wet and I see the water hitting the ground, but where is the actual rain? And so, so far, I, for my post-processing effects, I've been clicking Add Effect and Unity. But there's actually a custom effect. Now, uh, this effect here called do rain FX. This was written by uh, someone on our internal team. We can see if we can make this uh, available externally or we can post the source to it or whatever. Um, however, it's made just kind of specifically for the scene. Its intention is not necessarily, you know, to be all and end all of making your own post effects. It's just to show that, look, you can, and these are some of the things you can achieve, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Before I do, it's worth noting that I could achieve a rain effect with a particle system where it's dropping rain effects, but that can be fairly inefficient, and then the rain could clip through stuff, and, and you know, I don't really want any of that stuff. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on the rain FX, and we'll see it here. There we go. And so now, if I hit play, you'll see that we're gonna have rain as a post effect, a post processing effect, right? Those aren't individual little particles or anything like that. That is rain droplets falling as an image effect. So without it, with it, hopefully that's uh, seeable in the stream and in the video. Um, otherwise you can you know, watch the neon videos on YouTube or whatever to see the effects uh, with a higher rendered video, but it's really, cool effect, right? And that's really what we want to achieve that really, again, sells that sort of cinematic quality. Now, this project uses Timeline quite a bit for synchronizing uh, cinematics, and Timeline is a great prototyping tool for, for synchronizing some stuff. Even as we're building and prototyping, you'll see I'm going to use the Timeline to really be helpful there. So I'm going to go up to Window and then uh, Timeline Editor, and I like to just sort of dock this down here. I like to lock that window. Um, well, I can't lock it until I've picked something. So I will click my drop down here and I'm gonna go to my animations timeline and then I can lock it. There we go. And so we have a lot of things that are gonna be moving around the scene. If I move this, uh, we can, uh, well, we'll see some of them shortly. Um, I don't think they're all quite in here yet, but we'll see it here when I'm, we get to it. And it's quite a big timeline here. But the first thing is I have this uh, animation recorded looking for camera motion. All right, camera motion. So I'm gonna grab my main camera and just drop it on here. And so now when I hit play and that timeline runs, all right, my camera's actually gonna move. You can see it's sort of panning around and looking around. And, um, so yeah, we got uh, some timeline motion that's gonna help a lot with that. And this uh, spotlight moving is actually part of this timeline and stuff like that. Uh, and the nice thing about having the timeline window open and having the camera on my timeline is I can just scrub here to see, oh yeah, so they are, I just didn't give it long enough. So there's the drones moving around, looking around as part of my timeline. All right, so I can synchronize actions and stuff like that, see where my camera's gonna be. And as I do this, and I move my camera, I'm gonna see like right here, these pipes kind of get too close to my face. And I can see sort of the, the harsh edges on them and stuff, and I don't, I don't really want them here, super visible and stuff like that. I wanna, I wanna fix that, right? And so, I'm gonna use depth of field to do that. So I'm gonna go back to my, my uh, global post-processing here and I'm gonna to add to this some depth of field right there. And I'm gonna use that to put my focal point out here in the distance and blur the things that are too close to my camera that are just gonna be distracting. I wanna avoid distracting bits. So uh, I'm gonna set my focal distance to 20. Uh, and for my aperture, right now it's an aperture 5.6, which is a, a decent aperture, but I'm gonna go with a bigger aperture, thus a smaller number. So I'm gonna go with 0.9. There and then for my focal length here, I'm gonna set this to something kind of out front 40. And so there we go. And we can see sort of how we can adjust that and whatnot, but I'll leave that at 40. And then again with the distance, we can you know bring things closer and, and whatever, but I'll leave that at 20. So now as I scrub my scene, right, those are nice and blurry and out of focus, and these are blurry. I'm not focusing in on those. You tend to not focus on the blurry parts, you tend to look towards the sharp part. So again, I'm just drawing my eyes in to the scene where I want. However, you know, because, so that's working great, but when I come here, I notice that, you know, when they built this scene, they put this neat little car right there. And it would be kind of neat 
If I was able to, you know, be focused on my scene, blurry, blurry, come here, focus on the car, just for a second, just to see it, maybe it has a story element to it, maybe the car is important, and then go back to this being blurry as I, as I move on, right? Using my timeline to sort of synchronize this stuff. Well, I can, and this is actually something pretty cool that we're gonna take a look at here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, uh, I'm gonna actually grab another, use another post-processing volume. So I have this other one here called DOF Depth of Field. I've already have it set up. It is global, right? So it is gonna be applied universally and it has a priority of one as opposed to the global one priority of zero. Priority of one means it's gonna overrule all of the, uh, anything that I tell it to of the global profile, right? So specifically, I'm going to target depth of field. Again, it has an empty profile that I just clicked new previously to create. So it just has an empty profile here uh, and an animator, which we're going to use here in a second. And so I'm going to go to add effect, unity, depth of field. And I'm going to move my timeline down here to where it really matters as soon as it adds this here. So right about here is where I want to be able to see that car. And so let's go to depth of field. And so for depth of field, I just need to focus in on what I want to overwrite. So I don't need to overwrite my aperture or focal length. I like those, but I do want to overwrite my focal distance. And I'm going to bring this in until I'm focused on the car. Something like that. There we go. Two. Two is a good one. And so now we can see that my car is nice and focused because I'm overriding the focal distance and this is a higher priority. The problem is that well, it's blurring everything else. And I only want it to really be focused in on when I'm looking at it here. And so I could write some code that's gonna, you know, take this depth of field, and modify it, or take this one and turn it on and on. I don't wanna do any of that stuff, right? I don't, want, I don't wanna do any code here. There's no code with any of this stuff here. And so what I'm gonna do is instead, I'm gonna use timeline. Timeline's great for synchronizing, right? And I have an animation here on my timeline that I made with timeline that is looking for a post process volume dot weight. Wait a minute, I have a post process volume that has a weight. Jinkies, I bet you I can use these. I kind of feel like I'm playing Blue's Clues and right now I'm gonna be like, it's a clue, a clue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this depth of field object down here and I'm gonna let timeline take control of that property now. So if I look at depth of field, now that I'm in my timeline window, it's blue here, letting me know it's controlled by my timeline. And so it's got a weight of zero, and then my camera comes down here, looks at the car, weight of one, looks away, back again. How neat is that? That is pretty awesome. So again, no code, I'm using timeline to synchronize all of this stuff. Right? I just say, okay, I just want that weight to be that, and then I want the weight to be that. By the way, if you're thinking, oh, how do you create this animation that looks so complex? All I really did is, uh, you know, I'll move my timeline here, and I will just pop into record mode and say, back to one, and pop into record mode and say, back to zero. That's it. That is literally it. Uh, and, you know, that, then you can see the weight changing and stuff like that. Obviously, I want to undo that because that's not good, but. I don't have to leave this tool. I can just go record and then just move some stuff and it's done, right? And there it is. So pretty awesome there. Um, pretty cool stuff. Okay. So I have this neat thing where I can see the car now. That's that's kind of fun. And uh, there we go. So that is pretty slick there. And so now what I'm going to do is I have these cinematics, but I don't have all of these cinematics. We go back to my control board and I'm going to say, you know what? Give me some people. There we go. And that's sort of the last little bit. Those people are all controlled by these character movements and this other uh, timeline I have here for my, my characters, which this timeline is literally just a whole bunch of animations of all these different characters, right? That's it. And so let me come back here to my animations and we can see here the effect we can get. So pretty neat. And we got people walking around. We got these lights, you know, the rain's falling on them. I get this really cool sort of sci-fi, uh, just sort of maybe I'm a security camera looking through a security camera at all these people walking around. We're actually going to see what we can use timeline Cinemachine to do uh, here shortly to take this sort of to a whole new level, which is pretty cool. All right. And so I had a question here. Let's see. Can you set the third person character animations with timeline? Can you show it? Can you set a third person character? Yeah, I'm sure you could. Any, I mean, these are all people with animations and basically all you do is you just drag them onto the timeline and then drag the clip and when you want the clip to play right and that's pretty much it um, it's it's quite quite straightforward um, so you just uh, like here's my search light 
And all I did was I my searchlight's right there. I dragged it down here to create a track. And I have this probe scan animation that I made. And I just have it playing three times. This was all made within Unity. I just dragged it on there and that's all good to go.